Hello and welcome to In the Hyperloop. My name is Blake. Today we're going to get started with uh, a look back at the SpaceX pod competition rules um, that were released many weeks ago because right now at the start of testing week at Hawthorne, um, they're doing safety checks. So if you click this link, the 2019 Hyperloop pod competition rules, you'll get this document that was last updated August 23rd. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, um, we're kind of in the final design presentation uh, that had happened a couple um, weeks ago, and then the safety briefing um, before attending competition week. And this happened uh, Sunday and yesterday. Um, competitors will submit safe, a complete safety briefing um, instructions for which they'll be provided a safety checklist reference below. So the safety checklist is a list of design and safety considerations that SpaceX will use as a basis for evaluation pods on site during competition week. So that's cool. Now, what does this look like um, with a SpaceX Hyperloop pod competition team? Well, luckily Hyperloop UPV has uh, great daily blog posts. Um, so this is day two. Um, it's a fantastic read. I'd highly recommend you check it out. It's um, Google translated. But um, in the California until Monday, they all know well, Hyperloop UPV scores a triple at the last minute and takes the joy, first joy of the week home. Um, so this is just a really good, um, first they start off like they're um, like rock stars getting off their van. Um, and then, you know, it's, it goes kind of into like, they don't have many um, uh, students and engineers from past competitions, but they have a couple. So they're trying to get into the familiarity um, and you know, get um, used to um, the rhythm and flow of the SpaceX organization and um, pod competition. Um, so having participated in the final editions, um, I'm just kind of reading this, uh, other participants in the last couple of years um, have had uh, more time to work on their pods. Um, you know, they might have made, not made the safety criteria in last year's competition, so then they've spent two years working on one design on the pod. Um, this is kind of similar to um, IIT Madras or MIT um, Hyperloop pod teams. But the big opponents, as they say, come from home, Europe. Um, so the prototype of Technical University of Munich, um, TUM Hyperloop, um, winner of the last two Hyperloop pod competitions and those of Delft University in Netherlands and the Ecole Polytechnique Federal Lucerne uh, EPFL loop um, finalists in 2018 participated this year and um, they're also going to expect to do pretty well this year. Um, Monday, a good taste. So Monday at 4 p.m. a van full of students, Hyperloop UPV members, um, parked outside SpaceX venue um, as if it were a basketball team, again, they were to carry out a relay with their teammates as a maximum of 15 members per group uh, in the competition space uh, for safety and, and stuff. So if someone wants to enter, another person has to come out. Um, the replacement has been, you know, walkie-talkie um, and a tent where they are performing the tests and nerves um, emerge and, it, and looks are exchanged among UPV team members, they know their advisor, who is one of the strictest uh, advisors at SpaceX, so that's funny. About 16 hours and 23 minutes, a member of the formation uh, leaves and goes to the van where some of the colleagues are. Three out of three exceeded, he shouts, smugs, hiles, smiles, hugs, and joy um, at the last minute of the day, in the clutch, as it were to be said in the glass basketball jar jargon. Important tests have been reached. In addition, as the bearer of the good news also points out, this places us in the top four of classification right now, more hugs. Um, Fernando, uh, brand manager of Hyperloop UPV, puts our feet on the ground. Uh, uh, it's too early to take into account the classification too early, as this is an uh, early part of the pod competition. Um, but at the moment, they can uh, have a lot of joy. And um, they posted these two videos, and unfortunately, I don't, I don't, my Spanish is not so good. Um, so, you know, how, how was your week? And um, I'd highly recommend you check this out. Every day is a challenge, every hour they solve them, and every hour they solve them. And totally different. Really, even if you do a planification on the Monday, the Monday has changed. 
Entonces vamos al día a día solucionándolo todo y creemos que podemos llegar bien al final de la semana. So, yeah, and then, oops, how was the first day of competition? Bueno, pues el primer día ha ido bien. Hemos conseguido pasar algunas pruebas por la mañana y aún continuamos ahora mismo intentando pasar otras y estar ahí, conseguir el plan establecido y pasar todas las pruebas a tiempo para ser uno de los primeros. Al final eh, queremos ser uno de los primeros que entre en la cámara de vacío para evitar las colas y, y tener que esperar incluso un día para tener huecos para pasar una prueba. Entonces estamos luchando por intentar pasar todo lo posible los primeros días, solucionando problemas y cosas que no les han gustado a los advisors, pero parece que ya está todo correcto y ya están convencidos de que, bueno, al menos no están poniendo más pegas. Nice. So thank you Hyperloop UPV for providing uh, such great uh, coverage. And now we're going to go to Hype Ed, Edinburgh Hyperloop, um, where they, for the past nine months, Hype Ed has been working on their latest pro prototype, the Flying Scotsman, qualified for the 2019 um, SpaceX pod competition team. So let's listen. Student in. team based here at the University of Edinburgh, where we develop a Hyperloop prototype for the SpaceX Hyperloop competition. Hype has entered that competition for the last three years, where we've placed in the finals and built prototype pods for each one. This year, we're now building our third prototype and it's going to be better than ever. With last year's pod aiming to be a scalable Hyperloop prototype, this year's pod, the Flying Podsman, is all about speed. So we've been working with magnetic propulsion for the past few years now, and we think the technology is reaching a much more developed stage, not to mention it's one of the most important concepts in the Hyperloop in general. We've developed revolutionary arc synchronous motors that allow us to use contactless magnetic propulsion to fly down the tube at over 200 miles an hour. We're utilizing advanced composite materials that allow us to save on weight while we're also developing a sandwich structure honeycomb chassis that allows us to decelerate at 3G with minimal deflection. The HYPE team is made up of undergraduate students from universities across Edinburgh. We represent a diverse range of nationalities and a range of ages. HYPE presents opportunities for its members to take part in the design, build and test process and supplement what they learn in their courses in whatever degree they study. Everyone here is really proud of our creation and we can't wait to see our dreams become reality when it flies down the tube this summer in California. Nice. This is all possible with the... That's Hyperloop 1 test the track. Project, the support from the university, the technical staff, as well as the academic staff, and not to mention the financial support from our sponsors. So we'd like to thank you all. Nice. And I just want to yeah. quickly go over... Skyscanner um, is a big uh, company that... Uh, looks at air travel and can like do air travel stuff and hyper ed had a spin-off company uh, from the team um, president last year and so they're doing well um, so yeah keep following hyper ed um, now we're just going to go to instagram uh aaron ara one hyperloop which is uh, the pod competition team for 2020 um is, is looking at um and having meetings and staying cool um, so is Coep uh, <laughs> Hyperloop team from uh, Pune in India. So I think there's like two or three teams now um, that are working for 2020. Um, Delft Hyperloop released this video. Curious to see what our first week in LA looks like. This video gives you an impression. And this is um, at a workspace, Advanced Ceiling, a company of Eric's BV. My name is Ari Evans and I'm the Chief Engineer of the Delta Hyperloop team. My name is Drew Villasenor and I'm the Operations Manager here at Advanced Ceiling and Eric's company. Delta Hyperloop is a student team uh, existing out of 40 students and we are competing in the 2019 SpaceX Hyperloop Plus competition. We're owned by Eric's and we're an Eric's company. We're able to go to our customers and offer a solution-based products that you know, whether it's the products and also the process of insulation, we can guarantee a leak free seal throughout the industries that we're working with. So Delta Hyperloop here is working on the pod. 
for this final competition that is due uh, next week. So we're doing the final preparations, making sure the pod is in perfect state before we enter the SpaceX testing week. Nice. So that's cool. Uh, partnership. Um, Queen's Hyperloop, they've been working hard on their shell. Um, that I believe it's fiberglass. So good job uh, working really hard and cutting that down to size. And it looks pretty hot. <laughs> it's hot. Um, Hyperloop PV again um, released this video. Uh, Al final el equipo se ve que landing. somos 35 estudiantes, pero no solo nos quedamos ahí, sino que estamos apoyados por más de 50 empresas e instituciones que realmente apuestan por el talento joven, que apuestan por un proyecto totalmente innovador, que realmente quieren, quieren hacer algo más grande, no quieren simplemente desarrollar un producto, Airbnb. quieren innovar, que eso es lo más importante hoy en día en las empresas. Tenemos eh, muchos patrocinadores, bueno, por ejemplo Iberia, que nos ha, ha conseguido que estemos hoy en Los Ángeles gracias a... Bueno, eh, vuelos que nos, que nos han dado y la verdad es que estamos muy contentos de poder contar con ellos porque realmente eh, nos ayuda muchísimo porque es venir a una ciudad que está en la otra parte del mundo prácticamente y venir hasta aquí no es fácil, no es fácil porque los vuelos pues, normalmente son muy caros y somos mucha gente en el equipo, entonces Iberia nos ha ayudado muchísimo. También, bueno, en el, incluso en el vuelo el piloto nos mencionó que eran patrocinadores, al final, bueno, esos pequeños detalles nos hacen darnos cuenta de que Iberia es mucho más que una aerolínea. Cool. I want to see them on the airplane. Eh, Iberia realmente quiere apostar por el futuro y al final eh, sabe dónde está el futuro, sabe, sabe que es un proyecto muy innovador y está bueno, dentro de su ámbito, dentro del futuro del transporte. Así que realmente Future está muy gracioso. Oh, that's cool. Que está haciendo muy bien las cosas. Watching Falcon Heavy on Iberia. Future transportation. Um, EPFL, um, the Swiss team, day two. After a daily recap. Ever wonder how linear induction motor, aka the LM, I'm Nicolas works? Bouillet. I work in a propulsion team, and we have to create the linear induction motor in order to propel the, the pod. It's the first time in the competition that we have linear induction motor. In order to explain the linear motor, we first have to explain what is a rotative machine. You have the exterior, which is fixed. You put a three-phase current. This will create a magnetic flux, and the interaction with the inside and the outside magnetic flux will uh, make turn the inner parts. The linear motor is exactly the same thing, but we just open the, the motor, and we make something flat. It's very interesting to be in this team, which is creating something very new, and it's very cool to be all together to do, to do that and to, to have really this good spirit of team and to go further than we can do only by ourselves. It's very a good experience to do. Cool. And I think that's one of the first explanations of a linear induction motor that I've seen. So good job, EPFL Loop. Um, and uh, Team Water Loop is doing a good job uh, promoting all of their teammates and their technical directors. Um, really giving kind of an insight of what it takes to do a lot of work and um, you know how to uh, kind of give uh, credits and kudos to your teammates so good job um, hyper ed again this is um, from about a day ago uh, but they're working really hard um, making sure all their uh, uh, systems are assembled so now we're just going to take a quick look at Instagram stories um, and Vegapod, another Indian Hyperloop team, is working to recruit a lot of um, students. Um, EPFL Loop it has hit a thousand followers, yay! Um, posting late. Uh, what time is it where you live? It's, it's early morning. This year, we're now building our third prototype. Cool, we the saw the video. Is all about. With Thank you, Edinburgh Hyperloop, for cross-posting, that's really helpful. Um, Hyperloop meeting, um, Hyperloop UPV, great bio again of day two and the Air Iberia uh, sponsorship video is nice. Delft Hyperloop, first day of testing week. Uh, so they have had a 38 of 122 approvals so far. Um, Delft Hyperloop visit approvals, I might go there right now. Um, 60, 46 of 122, and then uh, 53 of 122. Um, and then University of Windsor Loop uh, has made it. Great job. 
The so, world's first passenger. Oops. Uh, just as I knocked out of the that. World's first passenger so Hyperloop TT. Hyperloop cannot be this is in France. And 320 meters of two. Anchored to the earth at the Francisol Air Force Base is anything but small. Yeah, that's full scale. Um, so um, let's just quickly go to um, Delft Hyper, Delft Hyperloop, um, and I think it was approvals. Nice, Delft Hyperloop approvals. So um, this is really helpful. Thank you, Delta Hyperlupa. And um, we see safety briefing, mechanical fit, um, structural inspection, battery ins instru inspection, functional tests, um, vacuum tests, navigation, state diagram, external subtrack, sub subtrack tests, um, open air Hyperloop tests, um, Hyperloop test and um, the final tally is at the very bottom of these. Isn't that crazy? So there's a lot, a lot, a lot to go through and we see everybody um, has passed the general safety briefing um, and so just a heck of a spreadsheet. So we'll be monitoring this. Thank you Delft uh, for giving a hat tip to this. Next is Paradigm Hyperloop. Um, uh, they are uh, finally uh, at SpaceX and they're working really hard. No time to rest here. Last night our team uh, even reviewed our calculations through supper. So competition um, nerves through dinner. So good job working hard uh, through dinner. And then um, that's about it. Finally, I just wanna end on a Hyperloop One um, video. Uh, Virgin Hyperloop One CEO says technology will turn New North Carolina cities into metro stops. So about this. I mean, I think first of all, by the way, the, the fact that we're at a place where there are, there are nine different states across our country actually looking at this really seriously and taking it forward is, is really, really exciting. North Carolina, literally today, is the newest. And Fair to point out, um, a couple of these states um, in the upper northwest, um, Colorado, uh, we haven't heard a lot of lately. Um, but of course, the really hot states, North Carolina, uh, Texas, um, Missouri, uh, Kansas City, the St. Louis, um, and then the Ohio, Mid-Atlantic um, region uh, from Pittsburgh, basically, or Columbus to Chicago. Um, those are really hot. In doing it. And, and if you think about North Carolina in the, in the, in the Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area, this, this research center is the largest research center in the entire country. Um, and, and we sometimes talk about it like these three places are actually next to each other, but they're not, right? They're, yeah. three, different, they're three different cities. And so they, they, they did a, a first analysis to explore the idea of could Hyperloop work to be able to, to connect this literally within minutes so that, that wow. you really begin to think of it in a different way. But I think what's also exciting about it is where it took off to, right? So, um, I, you know, there's this funny thing about Hyperloop. When you begin to imagine what it's like to have transportation at 670 miles an hour when you when you when you are flying when I you're mean, doing I can't even like it, comprehend it's hard to, in it's, LA right it's hard to imagine it's hard to imagine but when you start to think about it then your <laughs> mind starts to go mm -hmm. and it says why stop thinking of it like that so Raleigh Durham to Charlotte by Hyperloop is 24 minutes wow. right you've now connected the state you know the two big centers in the same they go a step further Raleigh Durham to Washington DC is just over 35 minutes and, and so the discussion today, uh, which I love, starts with, hey, we could do this in this region, and, and we can, and it would be wonderful to do that. Mm -hmm. But then everybody says, why stop there? Because yeah. you can imagine that this does so much more, and, it, and it's great. I yeah, I think that's a good point and a good way to uh, end this video. Um, so stay in the Hyperloop. Um, let us know what you think in the description below as we count down to SpaceX Pod Competition Day, and uh, have a good one.